Hello and welcome back to Mondo Musings. This is your presenter, Nicardo McLean. Now the heady headlines, teasing exciting news have come thick and fast so far this athletic season. In this episode of Mondo Musings Top 10 of the Weekend, we take a look at the 10 most intriguing track and field storylines so far in 2021. At number 10, Emboma drops a bomb. On April 17th, 17-year-old Christine Mboma broke the world under 2400 meter record for the second time in the space of a week. Her time of 49.22 seconds, two ticks faster than she'd run on April 11th, not only reset the Namibia national record, it also solidified her standing as the fastest female in the world. Remarkably, the sparsely populated Southern African nation, which was placed on the global athletics map by the exploits of multiple Olympic medalist Frankie Fredericks, now occupies the top two spots in the event on the 2021 performance list. Suffice to say, there are some very interesting times ahead. At number 9, Adams rolls back the years. Back in her heyday, a put of 19.65 meters from New Zealander Valerie Adams would have barely listed a murmur from the watching field events world. These days, though, are far removed from those when the Kiwi legend made the most hay. With what's likely to be her last Olympics looming, the 36-year-old two-time Games champion appears to be positioning herself to make a strong push to secure a historic third shot put title. It is, of course, a crowning career achievement that she was dramatically denied in Rio over four years ago. When America's Michelle Carter produced a freakish near 40-centimeter final round PB to snatch gold from her grasp. At number 8, Femke is a wrecking bowl. With all that's going on in the world, Femke Bowl's star turn at the 2021 European Athletics Indoor Championships probably didn't get the spotlight it truly deserved. The talented 21-year-old Dutch woman first notched up a facile victory in the women's 400 meters, dispatching the field by well over half a second. Two days later, she returned to easily overhaul Great Britain's Jessie Knight on the anchor leg of the 4x400-meter relay to secure gold for the Netherlands. The undisputed leader of a new generation of budding Dutch stars, this dynamic 400-meter hurdle specialist could just be the woman to close the yawning golfing class that's opened up between America's reigning Olympic champion Delilah Mohammed and compatriot Sidney McLaughlin and the rest of the world. At number 7, Leard lights it up. Earning such an accolade is almost a given when one covers 200 meters in 19.81 seconds as LSU's Terrence Lear did at the Texas Relays on March 27th. The mark catapulted the wiry sprinter who gave off some distinct Andre de Grasse circa 2015 vibes as he strode away from a solid field into third place on the NCAA Division I all-time performers list. It also secured him global leader status in an event that's currently owned by countryman Noah Lyles, who the 22-year-old sensation could well run into at June's U.S. Olympic team trials. At number 6, Van Niekerk leaves Botha for Brahman. It's not every day that a reigning Olympic champion parts company with a coach who led him to this greatest of glories. Yet, that's exactly what Wade Van Niekerk has chosen to do as he seeks to engineer a successful comeback from a devastating 2017 knee injury. The bold decision to leave Ans Botha for Lance Brauman may have something to do with the fact that three young, talented quarter-milers have vaulted into the all-time 400 meters top 10 since the world record holder in the one lap won his last global title in 2017. Rivals in one's rearview mirror are often closer than they appear. It seems that Van Niekerk has taken heed of this time-honored safety warning as he strives to stay one step ahead of the hungry chasing pack. At number 5, Athing mows him down. Not only was Athing Moe's sensational negative split 157.73 a collegiate outdoor record, the smooth, striding teenager's stunning time also wrested the world lead from fellow American Aji Wilson, who's been ranked number one in the event ever since two-time Olympic champion Casta Semenya was barred from competing over two laps. Having already reset the NCAA indoor standard earlier this year, the Texas A&M freshman appears primed to challenge the likes of Wilson for global supremacy in the very near future. 
If she consistently grabs races by the scruff of the neck, like she did at the Michael Johnson Invitational, we could well be witnessing the rise of the female version of David Rodisha. At number 4, Showstopping Shikari The foundations of the sprint world are still shuddering in the aftermath of the magnitude 9.0 earthquake that Shikari Richardson unleashed with her 1072 sonic boom at the Miramar Invitational. It was a performance so awe-inspiring that it prompted talk from people of no lesser caliber than multiple Olympic medalist and a noted analyst at Bolden that the 21-year-old is now odds-on for 100-meter gold in Tokyo. Even in a world where hot takes sell like hot cakes, such talk is slightly surprising. First, she must navigate the gauntlet that is the U.S. Olympic trials. Then, assuming she survives, she likely need to see off speedsters such as Marie-José Talou, Dina Asher-Smith, defending champion Elaine thompson Hera, and Shelly Ann Fraser-Price, arguably the greatest 100-meter woman of all time, inside Tokyo's Olympic Stadium. Now that's a tough task, even for one so talented. At number 3, The Rise of Rocket Rashid Young sprint hurdler Rashid Broadbell, who features prominently in our 10 Jamaican 20-year-olds who could make their Olympic debuts at Tokyo 2020 video, was certainly fantastic inside the National Stadium on Saturday, April 17th. For a brief period, he even held the distinction of being the year's fastest man, clearing 41-inch barriers over a 110-meter strip of track with his scintillating 1315 performance. Though current high hurdles king Grant Holloway quickly restored order to his kingdom, it's quite possible that the fast-rising Broadbell will eventually launch a credible challenge for the crown. It truly has been a meteoric ascent for the MVP man, who was only third best going over 39-inch hurdles at Boys and Girls Championships just two years ago. At number two, Champs is back. The absence of boys and girls championships leaves a void in a Jamaican track and field fan's life that only the return of champs can fill. Thankfully, after being in isolation since 2019, the planet's most passionately supported high school track and field meet will once again hold court inside the National Stadium from May 11th to 15th. Expectedly, it won't be business as usual, with a raft of big C proofing protocols slated to be in effect. As with all other well-wishers, Mondo Musings hopes that there will be strict adherence to these measures so that the meet can be conducted in the smoothest, safest way possible. And at number one, Olympics cancellation concerns. Despite repeated assurances that the Olympics is a go, there are lingering fears that all of our waiting and anticipation may ultimately be for naught. With the option of a further postponement apparently no longer on the table, it seems to be a July 2021 start or bust. Hopefully, fingers and toes crossed and prayers up, we'll all be enjoying the heats of the men's 3,000-meter steeplechase on Friday, July 30th at 9 a.m. Japan Standard Time as currently scheduled. And on that rather somber note, we've come to the end of another installment of Top 10 of the Weekend. If there are any other track and field storylines that have caught your eye so far in 2021, please drop a line about them in the comment section. Thanks as always for watching. Until next time, Godspeed.